Hey everybody, welcome to Daytron. My name is Dan. I am the technology evangelist here at Daytron Dynamics in New Hampshire. Uh, what that means is I get to tell you all about our cool technology. And today we're talking about vacuum work holding. It is uh, really cool, not just on Daytrons, but on any CNC machine. And there's a lot of questions about our vacuum work holding versus other vacuum work holding. What makes us different and when it's the right fit, when it's not the right fit. So today we're going to talk about that with the top nine questions we get all the time about vacuum work holding and answer them for you. So number one is really basic. How does vacuum work holding work? Uh, it's a pretty straightforward concept, and it's universally the same between our vacuum work holding and, and really any of our competitors. And it's quite simple. Basically, vacuum is being drawn from this bottom plate, and then you put material on top of it, usually with, one, with uh, some sort of gasket material in order to form a seal, and it sucks it down to the surface, clamping it in place. So it makes it really perfect for sheet material, whether you're working with uh, really thin sheet material that would otherwise vibrate a lot when you cut it, or really large plate material that it's hard to clamp and, and deal with. It reduces the setup time really greatly. So that, that's the first uh, and most important thing to remember is it's really about convenience, vacuum work holding. Um, but then we move on to our next question, which is, what does this do? Uh, this is sort of unique to us uh, in that most other vacuum tables have that gasket Layer. So you'll see a pretty common grid setup where you need to take a square cut gasket and stick it into the grooves in order to fit the shape of your part. So you would insert it along the grooves, place the plate down, and form that seal. Now the downside to that is if you were to drill a hole into this piece of material, it would break the seal on the vacuum and lift the part off. You'd break a tool, uh, you'd break probably your tool holder, your vacuum chuck, um, at least a scrap part at, at the very minimum. So that's sort of what makes uh, Daytron a little bit different, is that we use vacuum card. And what vacuum card is, is about a 30 thousandths of an inch thick, uh, that's about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 millimeter, um, piece of permeable card stock. And what that does for us is we place it on top of our vacuum chuck. We have these serpentine grooves on the top of it that propagate the vacuum outward. So we have every 100 millimeters, we have one hole to route vacuum to the surface. Uh, and when it spreads through that channel, it is then sort of uh, filtered through the paper on top. And that does two things. It spreads the vacuum evenly underneath the part. And then it also slows airflow for air, anywhere that air is leaking through. So for instance, same situation. We have this piece of material and we cut into it. Instead of losing all of our suction at that point, we're actually um, introducing a leak, but it is slowed way down by the, the paper. We also have a pump that can keep up with that. We're gonna get into that in some more detail shortly. So that's sort of the key differentiator here is that this sort of is our gasket. Uh, it, it allows us uh, the flexibility to throw a part on there sort of at any angle. Uh, without having to worry about where the gasket is um, or anything special about the setup. Uh, it gives us a lot of flexibility uh, in order to hold a different size and different shape parts uh, at, at a moment's notice. The next question that we get pretty often is how big or small can the parts be? And how big is really just a question of how big of a machine do you want? In this instance, we have an ML cube, which has a roughly 60 by 40 inch work envelope. We actually have a machine that is almost twice as large as that. And then we have machines that are much smaller than that, like a Neo, which, which is about 20 by 16 work envelope. Uh, but you can fill up the whole work envelope in that case if you wanted. Uh, it's actually quite convenient when you think about large sheet material. There's a lot of clamping to do on the outside and a lot of setup work. Um, so it's great to just throw a large sheet of material down on the surface and not have to worry about how you're gonna secure that. So that's really ideal. But then what about small parts? We get this question even more often. How small of a part can I hold on that without cutting it out? The answer is actually quite small. I personally have held parts that are about a quarter inch in diameter on our vacuum table. The, the key to it is how tall is that part? If you're working with thin sheet material, it's quite easy to cut some small parts out of that. The taller that material is, the more leverage it has, it can tip over when you're cutting it out. So it's something to be really aware of when you're doing your programming uh, and trying to pick out the right work holding for your situation. The other sort of trick up our sleeve is that we have variants on our vacuum card. So we don't just have our standard vacuum card, we also have uh, two variants called plus plus and plus plus plus. Uh, and what that is, is paper 
with an adhesive backing on it so that when you really need a part to stick to it, you can tack it on so that it won't move when you're cutting it out. It adds just that little bit of extra lateral grip to keep it from shifting when you're cutting the part out. The next question that we get often is, how much clamping force does vacuum work holding apply? And this is where I get to nerd out about the science of it, because I love that kind of stuff so much. Uh, and the answer is really pretty cool. It's not actually vacuum that's holding your piece down when you're using vacuum work holding. It's actually atmospheric pressure. So it depends on where you live. If you're, not, if you're at sea level, it's 14.7 pounds per square inch. If you're up in the Rockies, it might be less than that. So we'll take sea level, for example, right? A uh, piece of material this big, it's roughly 12 inch by five and a half inch. If we go to suck this down to our vacuum table, based on the square inches, roughly 66 square inches, uh, that equates to nearly 1,000 pounds of clamping force, just shy of half a ton. So with that, it's basically not going to move on you. Uh, and on top of that, the amount of clamping force here doesn't have to be as great when you're using something like a high RPM spindle that we have on all of our machines. So you pair high RPM spindles, low cutting forces, and sufficient clamping force, you've got everything you need. The next question we get is, do I need to back off my feeds and speeds? Most people thinking of traditional machining will just send it, right? They'll stick it in a vise, clamp it down, and go full hog wild on it. Is that the case with vacuum work holding? And often the situation, especially with, as I had mentioned previously, our high RPM spindles, our cutting tools, our vacuum work holding, we've made them work really cohesively well to together. So you don't need to back off your feeds and speeds when you're roughing a part out. Now, that changes when you go to cut the part out on its final pass. There's certain strategies that come into play when cutting out a small piece of material. So based on the size of material we have here, let's say our final part is only half as big, that's half the amount of clamping force. That means we're gonna have to approach it with a certain strategy, but it does not necessarily have to be slow. It can still be very quick and efficient for your process. The next question that we get pretty often is, what sort of vacuum pump do you need for our vacuum tables. So what's common in the industry is usually a Venturi pump, which uses compressed air uh, to, uh, with a Venturi to uh, create the suction. Uh, and that's suitable for when you have a gasket and not a lot of vacuum losses. But when we cut parts out and we uncover more area, then more air can flow through, so we have more vacuum loss. Uh, that's not a big deal. Uh, it just means you need an industrial pump um, sometimes as small as 20 CFM, but for really big tables like this, we might have as much as 200 CFM or possibly more, depending on the configuration and how big your parts are. Uh, we like to uh, work with a company called Bush, uh, who makes industrial vacuum pumps that are either rotary vein or dry cloth style uh, that are fantastic industrial pumps that work perfect for our, for our application. All right, our next question is, how do we protect our investment? Obviously, a really nice vacuum table is quite an investment um, in your machine setup, and you wanna protect it. So how do I prevent somebody from cutting into it when I'm cutting a part out? And the first line of defense is actually the vacuum card. Because it is about 30 thousandths of an inch thick, it allows you to cut all the way through your part and into this layer without damaging the table. But, of course, Accidents happen. Maybe you have a programmer who's new and he says to cut a half inch deep into the vacuum table. So that's why we have protection fields and we make sure we include it with uh, every machine that we have with Datron Next, our control software. Um, what protection fields does is allows the user to set a boundary uh, in the software that makes sure that you have sort of no fly zones so that your tool can't come in from the top or in from the sides for whatever area you choose to protect. So whenever we set up a vacuum table, we always make sure to set up a protection field uh, to protect your investment and that way you don't have to worry so much about setting up a new user with the machine. All right, our next question that we get pretty often is, how can I be sure that this is gonna work? Nobody really wants to spend a whole lot of money on a system like this and not be certain that it's gonna solve their problem. And neither do we. Uh, we like happy customers. So we have a full applications team here that is devoted to uh, checking out your application to make sure that if you have this part and you wanna make sure that it's gonna cut well on this work holding, we're available to uh, advise on that. We can actually test here at our facility and make sure that it's a good fit for your application. But there's still gonna be those instances where stuff just goes wrong. You're gonna have a tool that breaks or an operator that sets the part up wrong or something along those lines. We're only human. So what do you do then to make sure that if you're gonna have a part come off your vacuum table, what's the best way to avoid that? And with that, we actually offer something called vacuum monitoring. 
on uh, pretty much all our machines where it can monitor how much vacuum you're drawing at any time and actually set a software limit. So if it gets to a, a certain threshold where it's too low, then it will stop the uh, program from running and alert the operator before the part comes flying off of your vacuum table as just another line of defense to make sure that you have a reliable process in place. So our last question is, how is it to set up? Uh, typically, you're used to seeing a, a vacuum chuck with the gaskets, plus some hose, a Venturi pump, or something along those lines, stuff routed everywhere, and it can be kind of a hassle to set it up. Uh, in our case, it's quite a bit different. It's actually quite easy to set up because we design our own machines, we design our own work holdings, so we design them to work well with each other. Uh, so in this case, all we need to do uh, in order to install this, we have our vacuum pump sort of behind the wall here, vacuums routed into the back of the machine, and then our ports are actually in the surface of the table. So we remove a couple of protective covers, we roll in our vacuum table, we bolt it down, and that's it. Vacuum is routed underneath uh, to the vacuum table to supply vacuum, and then once it's bolted down, it's actually sitting on our conical grid system, so it's already true and flat to the axis of the machine. So once you face it off on your initial installation, that's pretty much it. There's uh, no work that needs to be done after to reflatten that as long as you're bolting it down in the same position. All right, that was nine of our most common questions answered about vacuum work holding. Hopefully that solved uh, some mysteries for you. But if you still have questions and want to know more, or you want to maybe see if this is a good solution for your problem, uh, then visit our website, datron.com. Follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Uh, or give us a call. Uh, number is in our details below if you're on YouTube, uh, or on our website on the top left. Uh, that's it for me, Dan DeMajor, um, checking in here from Datron Dynamics. Uh, we'll talk to you soon.